I'm going to guess that I am far from the only Unitarian Universalist to have a deeply conflicted relationship with the concept of sacrifice. I mean, sacrifice is a religious term that it's hard to know what to do with. The Jews of old sacrificed animals at the temple, which just seems archaic and kind of weird, and the Christian concept that God sacrificed his only begotten son for the redemption of humanity seems, well, maybe kind of a little bit creepy. But sacrifice is a thread that seems to run through religion. In addition to Judaism and Christianity, Hindus make sacrifices to gods, Buddhists leave offerings to God or ancestors, Indigenous religions around the world have practices of sacrifice. It's a thing. It seems so strange, and yet there it is, religion everywhere full of the notion of sacrifice. Now, to be clear, when I talk about sacrifice, I mean sacrifice as a choice, a choice to give something up, to lack things, to have loss, to not get what you need, that's not sacrifice. Sacrifice is a choice to give up a smaller thing for a larger thing. And it seems like when you get down to it, the only religion that does not endorse the concept of sacrifice is that of capitalism and the prosperity gospel that flows from it. Capitalism says that it's good to have more, it's good to want more, it's good to hold on and to strive and to struggle and to win by having more. Which is perhaps why it is that we need religion to call us to that uncomfortable place of sacrifice, of choosing to give things up because so many of the world's ills do require significant sacrifice. When you think about the evils of enormous economic inequality, well, the people in the top, top income brackets are going to need to give some things up in order for wealth to be more generally shared for the health of the society as a whole. And if you think about combating white supremacy, the reality is that white people are going to need to give up some privilege, if only the privilege of assuming that whiteness is normative, that your own experience as a white person is the way that the world is. And similarly for confronting sexism and patriarchal assumptions about male dominance, all of that involves giving things up, giving up some power, giving up some control, giving up some comfort of knowing that how things have always been is the way that things are always going to be. And the place where this becomes the most obvious and concrete to me is in the area of dealing with climate change and ecological devastation and pollution. It's so much that is asked of us for so large a job, and every moment contains its own kind of questions. Do I drive or take public transit or stay home? Do I buy this thing I want, even if it's wrapped in a great deal of plastic? Do I go on plane trips? Do I eat meat? Do I buy the eggs that are in a plastic carton but are pasture raised? Or do I take the eggs that are in a cardboard carton but are caged free? Everything is a choice when you know that you're talking about the fate of the planet. And everything that you can do is so small and maybe doesn't make a difference at all. And yet, somehow it seems right that we should all be called upon to sacrifice to gain something so very large. And that isn't easy. It's just really kind of hard. But here's the thing. 
while capitalism is really normal and natural in the sense that it goes along with our wishes and our brains desire to have more, it turns out our brains lie. Our brains tell us that we will be happier if we have more things, if we gain, if we indulge our pleasures. Our brains tell us that that is going to make us feel better. But our brains lie. And I mean that in the sense of this is something that has been thoroughly researched and well established in people around the world. It turns out that giving things away makes you happier than buying things. It turns out that sacrifice, giving things up, caring about the larger things more than the smaller things, actually makes us happier. But somehow our brains don't believe that. And so every instance of giving things up is a struggle, is a discomfort, is counter to what we want, only it isn't counter to what we want because it turns out that those acts of committing ourselves to the larger thing rather than the smaller thing, to generosity, to kindness, to listening and understanding and giving up our own place at the center of the universe, all of that makes us happier. And that's a truth that religion is really the only place that we hear that. It isn't a place in our culture that we usually go to. And so that religious message of sacrifice, of letting go, of caring for the larger, is something that we rely on our religious communities to build, to nudge us and to push us and to prod us in the direction of our own happiness in to the difficult and necessary growth of our own hearts.